I believe that hijab is not a thing that holds you back. Oh, but then it's not too Islamic, isn't it? You're beating people up. What I do is who I am. What part of that is being a Muslim. Hey, you rang it up, so what? My name is Chut Ifa Iza Binti Tengku Ermanda. I'm 25 years old. Well, almost. Uh, I work as a brand executive at Media Prima Verhat doing uh, religious, lifestyle and MacDoc for TV3 and TV9. Back in school, uh, I had a friend who told me that, oh hey, I wanted to try rugby and I was like, what? No, it's so dangerous and, and brutal. I was like, yeah, back in school I had that. Reminiscing back to when I had that perception, I was like, oh, that was funny. And then now I am in rugby. So. One, two, three, Brando! Okay, so our game is against um, the Bangkok Bang, eh? so let's go. Alhamdulillah, I think for rugby, the people are really, really supportive of me wearing Kidong. They're really happy seeing someone like me and still play this kind of contact sports and stuff and have like a normal life. Just that I have to uh, check my boundaries and stuff. Other people wear shorts. I wear shorts, but I have to wear like a longer tight pants. We have teams from Iran who wear Tudong and actually wear three-quarter pants and tights. So it's nothing, it's nothing bizarre in the rugby world for women to wear hijab. <laughs> Although I'm wearing hijab, uh, it doesn't mean that it restricts me from doing the things that I love. Like It's just that I have to do the things that I love the way Islam is. For example, like uh, playing rugby, I have to uh, cover my alright. I just have to wear long tights and long shirt, then I'm all good. <laughs> Alhamdulillah, we actually won against Bangkok Bangers! Woo! So, SEA Games and Asian Games was part of highlights for my contact rugby. For touch rugby, I played with Scorpion Putrajaya. Uh, we recently actually went to Paris to play in their tournament, so it was really great. Uh, recently, we went to Singapore for International Cup Challenge. Uh, we got third place. We actually won against Philippines and a team from Perth and a team from Sydney. So it was a really, really a milestone for me uh, individually and as a team. For all you girls out there, if you think that hijab is as a restriction for you, check that out because you can do whatever you can do. Like, I'm wearing hijab, but I'm playing rugby. What I do is who I am. What part of that is being a Muslim. So I've never separated um, religion with what I do. For me, it's just how I express myself and that's what art is to me. Uh, my name is Sharina Shaharin. I'm 22 years old and I'm a visual artist currently based in Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia. I currently open um, a studio called Everyday Studios and I'm working full time as an artist right now. Um, so basically, I grew up around the world. I moved countries every two years because of my father's job. The more you travel, I think the more you see the world and the more your eyes open to different cultures, for me, different art forms. So I think I developed um, a strong interest in art since a very young age. I think um, in Malaysia especially, we do not have appreciation for art, especially the type of art I do, which is like quite contemporary, like abstract. So I think I just want, ultimately want to change the perception of art in Malaysia. I started wearing tudung um, December of last year. Um, I used to live in London where I was studying and I started experimenting with tudung there during last Ramadan. It was 19 hours of fasting, so I had a lot of time to think. <laughs> and um, I think it was something I was preparing for. One day I woke up and I was just very conscious about my hair and um, I haven't taken it off since. 
I do get questions as in like, are you an artist or are you a Muslim artist? So I'm like, um, <laughs> is there a difference <laughs> in an artist and being a Muslim artist? I feel like what I do is who I am. What part of that is being a Muslim. So I've never separated um, religion with what I do. And I feel with my art, it's more expressive. I don't think it's controversial. I don't think I'm pushing boundaries in that negative sense. Um, I don't think my subject has changed ever since I started wearing the dome. I don't want people to focus on how I look um, and just focus on what the message I want to relay as well through my art. Um, so basically at the studio, on top of having a space for me to just do personal work, I also conduct workshops. Uh, I just think it's amazing that people don't realize how, how naturally good at art they can be. I just give them the tools and then they can run wild with their imagination. So I think it's always interesting to see the outcomes of the workshops. I have moms come in for workshops, I have corporate people come in for workshops, it's not just young people anymore. So it's just nice to see that no matter what your age now, people are giving themselves the freedom to explore something they've always wanted to do. So I think that's a very positive thing to see in Malaysia right now. I feel like as a Muslim woman, you should never have to compromise your values for anything and that being Muslim is just being of who you are. I think being a good person and being a good Muslim can allow you to pursue anything you want to do as long as your intentions are there. So never stop dreaming. I think always continue to perfect your craft and um, never allow other people's judgment of you, especially when it comes to your physical appearance, to um, deter you from the path you want to take in life. Hi, I'm Halina and I'm a mixed martial arts practitioner. Hi, my name is Nohalina Binti Mohamad Zaini. I'm 25 years old and I'm living in Shah Alam. I started with MMA about three years ago during Ramadan. Um, a friend introduced it to me. I just moved to Shah Alam at that time and I didn't know that there was an MMA gym just about two minutes away from my house. So um, one night after Taraweeh, he just he put me here, and then I, I never stopped. <laughs> I feel like with MMA, you know, I, I'm more patient, I am more confident. I mean, not so much that, you know, okay, I'm going to go see around, I'm going to beat people up. No, 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 it's not. It gives me the security that I needed. And, and generally, it makes me even more disciplined towards life. It's the night before that you, you want to fight. You know, you start having all these this, this scenarios in your head. Okay, you know what? If, am I going to win? Am I going to lose? Am I going to get like, punched real bad? Step into the cage. You just, everything just goes away. And you just like, you stop. All the, all the fears just went off. And you know what? I'm, she's a girl. She's a human being. And you're just going to fight. Well, um, initially, well, before I put on the tudung, I, you know, I would come to training, I would wear my shorts, and we just tights and shorts, it wasn't long, long sleeve. You know, it makes you feel even more free, freer to do, to follow the movements and everything. So I find when I start covering up, then, you know, I felt, felt weird, you know, at first. And then because, you know, when I train, I have I had this on, so you keep on slipping off at first, you know. Then I find out that, you know, you actually have to fold it in and you will actually stay. The people that I spar with, they're nice enough to tell me, okay, Halina, your, your hair is showing, let's stop for that. So they will actually tell me that's a, it's nice. I guess it comes from your nawaitu, niat within, you know. Why do you want to wear to do in the first place? It's yes, because you want to cover up because of God, you know. So I guess that's one of the things that, that put me, like, that made me sustain my decision was because of God. You know, a lot of people were like, what? You do MMA? But you look so... Um, lady like or so demure and I'm like, yeah, that's the thing with MMA, you know, you don't expect. You could see a girl wearing like long jubah, long tudung and everything. She could beat you up, you know. I have faced a couple of people that actually told me like, you know what, I think you should slow down. You should you should stop doing what you want to do, you know. But you're a girl, you know, in the future then you know you're gonna be a wife, you're gonna be a mother and then, you know, you don't really wanna carry your baby with a broken and I'm like Dude, it's my life. <laughs> You know, don't tell me what to do. To all those wearing tudung, don't take this as a restriction 
Don't let society tell you, you know, just because you're wearing tudung, that you have to be, you have to stay at home and cook and everything. No. If you want to do that, you do that. But at the same time, don't let this be a restriction. For all you girls out there, don't let this be a restriction. Pursue anything you want to do as long as your intentions are there. You can do whatever you can do. Go out there, explore the world, enjoy life.